you tell me who's the man to beat? I am the man to beat for me because I control what I do and that's why I feel like I compete against myself. Talent is really not where champions are made. I think it's in all of the other little details. How mentally strong I go into a race, how well I've trained this year, how well I've recovered this year. And if I'm winning in those aspects, I think I'm gonna be pretty damn good. I legitimately do love pushing myself to the limit. You know, I, I love getting up, feeling totally broken down, and trying to find a way to have a great practice. Representing California Aquatics, the third fastest time in the world, Ryan Murphy. He is one of the most competitive people I know, and I think what drives him is a lot of what drives me. Leah Smith is a 2016 U.S. Olympian. I mean, as tough as nails. From Cavalier Swimming, Leah Smith. When I was younger, I used to have these countdowns on my phone. And I was super excited for all these meets and things that I had going on in my life. But I think that got me way too thinking about the long term. Now I really like to be just in the present. Taking it step by step, day by day, is really how I like to attack things. Those are threes. That's two five. Nine nine. Nine five. That's eight four. What was the question? Our training today is active rest work, so not getting a lot of rest since it's some fast, repetitive swims, consistent stroke counts. You know, we're still trying to make some corrections through what they're doing technically as they're swimming, but it's about time and rhythm. Dave Durden is always like three steps ahead of you. It's just absurd how smart that guy is. You know, I think he's the best coach in the world. Let's get it going, boys. Come on, right here. Dave is your typical dad. He loves wine, he loves golf. That's terrible, I'm gonna take another one because that was so bad. We can edit out that first one, right? I think confidence comes through how they move through their process, how they move through their routine and developing a routine that they come back to time and time and time again. And that's something that I work with our guys on. Keep that head steady, chin away from the chest. Stay just a little bit taller in how you're swimming. You're a little bit here. My confidence is mainly just comes from the times that I put up in practice. I really try to use those to pump me up for how I think I can do in a meet. I used to not be great at dealing with pressure to the point where some girls on my team made me a little bucket because I would throw up before every race. And they decorated it and they said, Ryan's puke bucket. And I would carry this thing around. <laughs> Luckily, I had grown out of that. I try to do my best to elevate every other meet to the status of the Olympics so that when you get there, it feels normal. That was really good on the finish through there. That was consistent. That didn't fall off to like one, two, five or anything. Nathan Adrian, he's been the best US sprinter for 10 years and that's an incredible string of consistency. I think of him as a mentor to me. Found the smallest tree to get behind. I think something that, that stands out uh, with Nathan Starr is just the amount of power that he creates. You know, how he gets off the blocks, the explosiveness with his legs is really a strength of his. And the field roars to the first 50. Looks to be Caleb Dressel. But it's Michael Chadwick at 2281 trying to break away. Here comes lane six, Nathan Adrian taking the win at 47.9. Caleb Dressel, he was just one 100 back. What's going on, everybody? Dude, I can't use any of that footage. If I get to pet a penguin today, oh my god, day will be made. Being the best swimmer in the world requires sacrifice, discipline, and a willingness to do things that other people are not willing to do. And Caleb does all of those things. 
he dives in at the same time as everyone else, but the second they hit the water, he's already three feet in front of everyone. He has the fastest reaction time in the world, and I honestly can't explain it. Russell jumps on that first 15 meters. He's out front early. Can Nathan Adrian chase him down like he did in the 100? I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, Russell's going to hang on, and Caleb Russell's going to win it, and Adrian got second. He has the talent, he has the body type, but mainly he has the work ethic. And it clearly shows. I think when you're talking about developing a start, one of the easiest things to do is to develop your jump. And one of the most common mistakes is to mistake strength for explosiveness. Like if I, if I could like squat 700 pounds like to parallel, um, that's not going to help me jump higher. What's going to help me is, is doing the plyometrics, is doing box jumps, or different exercises in, in, in that way. One tip for a high school swimmer, I'm going to always move towards, towards entry and making sure that you're going through really you know, one, one hole with your body from your fingertips to your toes. The less splash, the better. And then, you know, the more horizontal velocity, that's probably the better. If you're looking to go even further, you can talk about your dolphin kick, because I would count that into your start, because it takes part of the first 15 meters. Uh, but all those things are just little, you know, pieces to what create a good start. Two things I ask our guys to do on a weekly basis when it comes to recovery. The first is getting on a massage table. It helps their body relax, get themselves in, in a place that uh, they're ready to go for the next week of training. The second thing is getting outside, getting outdoors, doing something that relaxes their mind. What's good? Let's see. All the pain is right around me. In the heat of the night, I might be. In the heat of the night, I might be. Recovery is really important, especially in a situation big meet where you might have maybe three or four races in a day and so you need to figure out how to engage and get yourself ready to compete and then disengage and recover from that effort you made and then re-engage and disengage and it really is a practice skill and you have to make it a specific goal. So I'm, I'm foam rolling right now just getting the muscles nice and loose before a, for a nice good weight workout. I had a really tough practice today, so I am refueling with a little bit of ramen and some other delicious things. I probably eat 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. Four to 5,000 calories, just depending whether it's a single or double. This battle, this test, to be the best from the east to the west. It's intense like a full core press, gotta break from the belly of the beast and stay blessed. Sometimes it's not that athletes don't know how to recover, but they just don't make it a priority. The difference between listening to music that helps you recover or hanging out with people that help you recover versus the ones that stress you out, the way you talk to yourself, all have an impact, and those are all choices an athlete can make. As 2020 rolls around, that's when it gets pretty serious. That's when recovery becomes a huge, huge portion of your life. You know, I have a lot of other obligations. I have a fiance, like we're getting married pretty soon. I mean, this sounds silly, but I have a cat. <laughs> what is her favorite time of the day? Yeah, 4 a.m. So I sleep with earplugs every night now. That's a new habit. It is, uh, it is for recovery. In terms of sleep, I'm trying to hit eight hours a night. I'm probably watching like three to four hours of Netflix a day. My big days, I would probably watch three episodes. Then I look at the clock and it's a little bit past my bedtime. If I'm not training, I'm thinking about what my actions are doing right now to help me recover. Part of it is planning and making recovery a priority because at this level, the very highest level, recovery is a giant factor in performance. I don't do this to win or for the glory. Uh, you know, I, I do this because I love this sport. I'm really happy with the block of work I've done this year, and I'm excited to race. Nationals this summer is huge because 
The 2019 World Championships, which will be decided this summer, is really the last big meet before the 2020 Games in Tokyo. You know, one of the hardest lessons that this sport taught me is that failure is okay. What's not okay is giving up on something that, that you really want.